Welcome Dawnbringer Crusaders to an Age of Sigmar Warhammer video where I will go over my preparation for my first ever game of Age of Sigmar. Now I am not an expert, I haven't even played a game yet. So this isn't necessarily advice for people that want to get into it. It's going to be a video where I share my preparation and kind of what I've done to get ready to, to go into the you know my, my local Warhammer store, I mean, local, it's, it's a bit of a drive. Uh, and then when I actually go in, I can make a follow up video. I can talk about my first game uh, and what I got right and what I got wrong. I'm really excited to get to actually play a game because I've been painting these miniatures for a long time now. I started in the summer and I've been really hoping to get enough miniatures together to play a 1000 point game and I finally have done that. I thought maybe I would be going into the store a couple of weeks ago, but work got in the way. So tomorrow is the day where I finally get to put these models down onto the table and kind of see how it stacks up. So I created some cheat sheets for myself to help me stay focused uh, and stay organized with all the various things that I have to know. And so I know there are cheat sheets that already exist out there and I will link those in the video description. So if you're a new player, you can also use those cheat sheets, but I am a teacher. And one thing I always tell my students is, is that if you grab somebody else's cheat sheet before a test, it's not gonna help you nearly as much, if at all, than if you actually did your homework and made your own cheat sheet. So that's what I did. I kind of went through it on some pieces of paper and we're gonna take a look at those now. Okay, welcome to my computer desk and I'm using my other webcam to film this. I apologize for the shaking. I need to get some kind of tripod or something to do this. But you can see my awesome World of Warcraft play mat and my cheat sheets that I made. So I made two that kind of go over, sorry there, uh, go over the different phases of the game. And then my third cheat sheet is going to be an army list. And I think we should start there. So what is what I have here is uh, the different units that I have built and painted. So we're going to have a free guild marshal and relic envoy uh, who has the dueling pistol and the silver uh, sword. And that's going to be my general. And I, I don't really know if that's the, I think that's the good choice to be my general because I actually have a game plan down at the bottom here where my marshal is going to be moving alongside my fusiliers and my great cannon uh, to give them support by giving them orders and giving, uh, spending command points on things to help them shoot. And so I figure if my general is hanging out with my shooters, then that is going to make it easier or more likely that they will survive. So uh, just to help along that, that theme, I actually have the Mastro Vivetti's Magnificent Macroscope, which is going to give some range to my ranged units. Uh, it's going to give, I also have the Master of Ballistics. So when I use a all out attack command ability on my, uh, my Fusiliers or on my Great Cannon, it's not only going to increase their hit by one, it's going to increase their wound by one, and it will be all the more likely that I'm able to do more damage with my shooting. I also have an Alchemite Warforger and the role of that unit is going to be to move with my Steel Helms uh, to give them orders and commands. The cool thing about the Steel Helms is that when I give a command to one of them, they are able to copy it to another Steel Helm uh, because they have an ability called Hold the Line. So these are going to be these kind of like power pairs or, or power trios that will be the backbone of my army. Uh, is It's going to be the Free Guild with the Shooters and the Alchemite my war forger with my militia and then i will have a couple of wild cards here we have the uh, free guild uh, cavaliers and they are going to be roaming around charging at people and i don't really have a very specific purpose for them yet uh, maybe i can go take over or, or you know dispute an objective with them and then we have the venari blade lords and those are lumineth realm lord allies that i'm bringing in order to push my list to 1000 points because i just don't have enough cities of sigmar yet to be able to have 1000 points. So you can see here uh, that the spell that I'm taking for my Alchemite Warforger is going to be Transmutation of Lead. It basically allows uh, me to roll uh, dice 
uh, one dice per model in the unit that I'm targeting. And I can't remember what the, the dice I have to actually hit, but I can deal mortal wounds to those units. And that seems like a pretty powerful spell to me. So I'm going to go ahead and roll with that. But I might actually be using his runic crucible uh, to protect my units by giving them plus one to save or maybe even just using uh, his own war scroll spell uh, which is the blazing weapons uh, that gives a mortal wounds when you roll sixes so with this army in mind and i don't have a grand strategy yet i do i did pick a city i picked mist haven and i thought uh, this would be an easier city to use uh, for a brand new player. The reason I thought that is there's less to keep track of. Basically, in my movement phase, I can use uh, my Mist Haven ability to make three units move further, and you can actually move into combat range with this ability so you don't have to charge. Uh, and I figured this would be a really good way to uh, sorry, position uh, my, uh, my shooting units because they are unlikely to be too close to the enemy and you cannot be within, I think, three inches of a, an enemy and use the Mist Haven uh, ability. So it's not going to work great with a lot of my melee units, but it should work great with my shooting core. Okay, with all of that said, let's take a look at my other cheat sheets here. So the first thing that I did was I wrote out my turn sequence at the top here, uh, and then I started going through all of the phases and everything in blue is what I did first. So I went through the hero phase and all the things that I can do there. I talked about what I can do during my opponent's hero phase. And I have a little reminder for myself up here. I moved on to the movement phase. I moved on to the shooting phase, the charge phase, the combat phase, the battle shock phase, and I put some reminders. The next thing that I did was I took a look at some of the things that I have equipped to my army and I made sure that I made notes for myself so I know how to use those things and when to use them. So for example, during my movement phase, I need to use that shadowed approach Mist Haven ability and also my advanced uh, information order. In the shooting phase, I really need to remember to apply my return fire or suppressing fire orders uh, and that I use the abilities of my macroscope and my master of ballistics. I have the other orders for charge phase marked down here. And then in red, I have reminders for what specific units do. So for example, at the end of my hero phase, I need to choose with my Alchemite Warforger whether I am going to uh, consume his Runic Crucible uh, and protect my allies, or if I will hold on to it and have plus one to casting. With my Steel Helms, I have a reminder to consecrate the land at the end of my movement phase, which allows me to capture objectives more easily. And then with my Free Guild Cavaliers, I have a devastating charge reminder at the charge phase. Now there's other things that these units can do that I haven't mentioned here, but I think that's okay for now uh, because I, I think this is a lot of information already to keep track of. I also have a little reminders area here, uh, and it's just about contesting objectives and how that's going to all factor in. Another cool thing that I wanted to show off are all the cards and tokens that came with my army set. So I'm actually going to have the war scrolls for each of my units here, and I'll be able to reference these as I play the game. It's going to be a little bit more handy than actually going through my book every time I need to look at a war scroll. So I'm really happy to have those available to me. I also have access to battle tactic tokens, which will be really helpful for me because again, I don't really know these very well at this point. point at this point, I also have command point tokens, which can be one or three, although I don't think you often have uh, three command tokens. There's even tokens to know which spells uh, you have actually, or spells and abilities you actually have active right now. So for example, I have a blazing weapons to remind myself and my opponent that I have actually used blazing weapons on somebody. As well as that, I also have a bunch of orders tokens that I can use that have the order emblem on one side and there are actual tokens that you play similar to trap cards. So for example, if we see right here, we have the same logo on both sides. Well, this is actually 
the advance in formation order. So I will, at the beginning of the round, after the initiative is settled, I will put down some tokens next to my units. My opponent will not know what they are, but during my movement phase, I will reveal that I have actually used a uh, Cities of Sigmar order advanced formation, and I will be able to track that uh, with these tokens. I also have access to some cards, and it's a little bit uh, redundant here because I have all of the orders listed again. Uh, but what's also very cool uh, is that I have access not to my orders, but to my spells. So right here we have Transmutation of Lead, uh, the spell I was just talking about. We also have the Master, Master of Ballistics. Uh, so this is what allows me to add one to wound uh, rolls, specifically when I target my cast light units with the all out attack in the shooting phase, uh, specifically, uh, so not in the combat phase if they are shooting there. We also have my macro scope, which just means that if my my free guild uh, marshal is within uh, a certain 12 uh, inches of my shooting units, that they will be able to add three to their range, which is really awesome uh, for my shooting list. So as you can see, very basic preparations have been made for this battle. I have a very basic strategy, these power trios that are going to be hanging out together. And otherwise, I'm just going to try to adapt and, and kind of get the hang of how the actual flow of a game goes. Now, maybe I've actually missed something. And if you can think of something because you're an experienced player, you can always let me know. But otherwise, I think that at this point, I've done about as much preparation as a player can do uh, at least you know, without running through some sort of like hypothetical game on their table or something. So I'm happy to just kind of learn the mechanics of the game as I go. Hopefully I have an opponent that's patient and wants to learn the mechanics or teach me the mechanics as we go. Uh, but I feel like, uh, you know, I've prepared as much as I can and re have re retained as much information as I can, because I think for a player to go into a game knowing literally everything, their very first round is probably unreasonable. So with that said, I'm going to sign off, but I will be back with a video detailing how my first match went and hopefully I'll take some photos so I can put those up on screen too. Uh, but wish me luck and let me know. I, I'm actually very curious uh, in two things. One, if you have any advice for me and two, how was your first match of Warhammer? Doesn't matter if it was 40K, if it was Fantasy Battle, if it's Old World, if it's Age of Sigmar. I'm really curious if you've played Warhammer how it went uh, and how it went after that point if you got better if you started playing more whatever it is uh, and otherwise i'll see you all soon in another video